The detection of the cosmic microwave background in the mid-1960s stands as one of the most fascinating discoveries of modern science, as it confirmed that we live in a dynamic universe that used to be radically different from its present form. Precision measurements of the CMB over the decades has revealed a treasure trove of information about the cosmos. Much of this information comes from detailed maps of variations in the CMB brightness across the sky, but our theories do not predict these exact maps. Rather, they predict some of their overall statistical properties. In this video, we'll introduce the most important of these statistical properties, the power spectrum, and we will explain the origin of its most prominent feature, a series of peaks. These peaks were predicted over 50 years ago and have, in the past 20 years, been discovered and measured with high precision. They reveal some of the beauty and simplicity of the acoustic physics that produces them. We begin with a brief review of what we are looking at when we look at a map of the CMB. Roughly speaking, we are seeing a thin shell of the primordial plasma as it was during its transition from ionized plasma to neutral gas about 14 billion years ago. While the plasma in the early universe was nearly homogeneous, small departures from the mean density induced pressure and gravitational potential gradients that drove acoustic oscillations within the plasma. We can see these dynamics at play in this simulation, where more yellow spots represent slight overdensities in the plasma, and more purple spots represent slight underdensities. The fluctuations over time are driven by the gravitational and pressure gradients generated by such over and under densities. The small amplitude of these departures from homogeneity makes it possible to calculate the dynamics of these oscillations with a high degree of accuracy. Our ability to generate accurate and precise predictions given a model is a major reason why the CMB is so scientifically valuable. Most natural systems are too difficult to fully understand from first principles. Once we have a map of these density fluctuations, how do we interpret what we see? After all, our models don't predict maps, meaning that while cosmological models can predict certain overall properties of the CMB, they won't tell us exactly where a given bright or dim spot should be. So what we're really looking for is a way to quantify some particular characteristics we see in the map. The single most informative statistic for characterizing the variations in CMB brightness is its power spectrum. The mathematical procedure used to yield this statistic is called a Fourier transform, but for now we're going to skip the hard math and explore what this transformation represents visually. Using Fourier decomposition, we can take an image of a simulated CMB like this and isolate periodic variations of particular wavelengths present in the image. For example, here we have isolated three sets of wave modes present in the image with decreasing wavelengths towards the right. If we continue this process onwards, making note of the average variance in intensity produced by each set of modes, we could graph the variance versus the wavelength and get the following plot. As the spacing between isolated modes is taken to its continuum limit, this plot becomes a continuous curve. The variance as a function of wavelength, or its inverse, is known as a power spectrum. In the context of the CMB then, the power spectrum tells us about the contribution of features of various wavelengths in producing the overall map that we observe. Starting with the assumption that all of the waves generated in the early universe began from rest, we can begin to understand where these features come from. Basic wave mechanics tells us that waves of different wavelengths will all evolve independently, with an oscillation frequency inversely proportional to their wavelength. Thus, waves with longer spatial wavelengths oscillate more slowly in time, while waves with shorter spatial wavelengths oscillate more quickly in time. This same logic applies to the various wave modes present in the primordial plasma. If we take the longest wavelength features in our simulated CMB shown earlier and evolve them in time, we see that the amplitude oscillates like a cosine function with a frequency inversely proportional to the underlying wavelength. Because we are interested in the variance of each wave mode at the time of recombination, we square their amplitudes before generating our power spectrum. The presence of the first peak, which corresponds to features approximately one degree in angular size on the sky, indicates that from the beginning of the fluctuations to the moment of recombination, waves of this size were able to pass through at least one half of an oscillation, from peak to null to peak again, as we can see here. The existence of a second peak from wave modes with half the wavelength makes perfect sense then. These waves oscillated twice as fast, so by the time of recombination, they had passed through one full cycle. Waves directly in between these peak modes in their length were passing through nulls at the time of recombination, resulting in the lower power troughs between each peak. For simplicity here, we're employing a toy model that only demonstrates how we get a series of periodic peaks in the power spectrum. For the case of the real CMB, there is additional physics involved in producing the exact shape that we see. 
Thus, the uniform spacing of the peaks in the CMB power spectrum is in agreement with the idea that the plasma of the early universe contained oscillating waves that started from rest. In this video, we explored three major aspects of CMB physics. First, we reviewed the significance of the CMB and demonstrated how maps of its varying intensity can inform us about the state of the primordial plasma just as it was disappearing in its transition to a transparent neutral gas. Secondly, we emphasized how our theories don't predict the CMB maps themselves, but rather predict overall statistical properties of the CMB, the most important of which being its power spectrum, a measure of the contribution of waves of various wavelengths in generating the CMB maps we observe today. Finally, we showed that by assuming the perturbations in the primordial plasma started with zero velocity, basic wave mechanics leads us to the prediction that the CMB power spectrum should contain a series of peaks with uniform spacing, which matches what we observe today. The remarkable agreement between CMB power spectrum predictions and observations gives us some degree of confidence that we understand the dynamics of this primordial plasma on the edge of the observable universe as it was 14 billion years ago.